I will show you. The, the streaming videos are in the podcast. They are quick time, so I'm not sure if that's an issue. It says single sign on requires cookies to enable your browser, but I haven't. I'll have a look after at the end if, if that's okay. All right then, so uh, we're going to be talking today about web applications, and I'm having to compete with some music from next door. Interesting to know what that, that, that lecture is. So I apologize for anybody who's watching this afterwards. Uh, nothing I could do about it. Also, we're going to be talking about web applications. And although I've got uh, loads of slides and notes and things, what I thought I would, be, would be better to do would be just to sort of show you the web applications and, and the various features about them. So I'm just going to, instead of giving a, a massive uh, introduction, I'm just going to go through the first few slides on this uh, presentation, and then we'll switch over and just look at things uh, live in the browser. And in addition to that, I'm going to going to be showing you uh, the HTML, CSS, the JavaScript using uh, Firebug. Um, this is really an introduction to what's going to follow on later on in the course when we talk about uh, PHP and so on. Um, but it's really a sort of introduction to the standard platform and some of its variations. So what I'm going to talk today, today about is mo mostly about web applications and an introduction to what they are. Shouldn't be, uh, uh, you should all know, I guess, by now. Because I, I guess, you know, as more time goes on, more and more students have actually been using web applications exclusively for longer. So I'm going to just very quickly go over what a web application is. Then I'll say a few words about the LAMP platform, which is one of the most common ways of... Uh, developing and delivering web applications. But I'll spend the majority of this course actually looking at various web applications and the frameworks used to build them. Um, so we get a flavor of what's to come later in the course. Um, reading, um, Wikipedia, I got most of the text for these slides from Wikipedia, which is one of my favorite go-to places for finding stuff out. Stuff that I can use in lectures, that is, because it's uh, available under free copyright. Uh, Google, of course, is always a good place, and I've got a few delicious bookmarks, which you'll find on the Blackboard site. So, uh, basically, what we're hoping to do in this uh, session is ask, ask, answer the question, what is a web application? We'll be talking about thin and thick clients, so I'll uh, expect you know what I mean by those two terms. Why is a web application advantageous over traditional client-server applications or even desktop applications? And the disadvantages thereof. I'm going to talk about what's called a three-tier model of a web application and list the steps that you go through in order to get something done on the web. We'll, we'll, we'll define the term application service provider. Um, the, there are various other terms for this, cloud computing, software as a service, and various other terms are used for this idea. Um, but it's slightly different from the term internet service provider, which you may be more familiar with. And we will define, or I expect you to be able to define Tell me what the L, A, and M, and P mean in LAMP. And uh, hopefully you'll be able to tell me a couple of examples of each of those main types of um, web applications that I'm going to talk about today. There are many others, of course, but these are the main sort of features that we'll be looking at. So a web app, then, is just an application that's accessed using web protocols over the internet, or an internet. Um, they are popular because um, the client, for
for these applications is a web browser. And web browsers exist on just about every platform that you could possibly think about for connecting to the internet. So from the, mo from the mobile phone right through to, uh, to the uh, highest spec computer. The main reason why they're, they're popular is that there's, there's not a great deal of overhead in terms of software maintenance. In fact, if every time the user goes to the web application, if the software's been updated, the browser gets the latest version. And so there's no issue of cost of actually having to upgrade lots of software and, and, and have service packs and all this business. Of course, if the server itself goes wrong, as it did with Blackboard last week, uh, you're stuck, but uh, for the most part, the actual bit that you're worried about, the, the front end, is, is is easily updated. So they're used for implementing webmail, online shops, uh, things like um, eBay, wikis, discussion boards, etc., etc., etc. In fact, there's very few functions um, these days where you you can't find a web application even. Video iron stuff is available. Uh, just to define those terms, client server, thick client, and thin client a little bit more. The idea of a, a thick client is is what used to exist before the web browser and web apps became very popular. Effectively, what you would get is you'd have a some kind of uh, application software, maybe the um, Internet database or something would be sitting on a server, and client programs would be written to access that information. And those client programs would be installed on people's desktop machines, and they would act as a user interface. But they'd have a lot of intelligence built into them. Um, if the application data or the application uh, changes at all, then all those clients would have to be upgraded, which gives you a high support and maintenance cost. The idea of a web application is, is a thin client. Effectively, they, just, they, they attempt to use standard formats. In, our, in the case of web applications, we usually expect to see HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Although, of course, you can have web applications written in Flash or Silverlight or some other standard. But we will sort of restrict our discussion to those, those three. Things uh, the user interface is delivered on demand every time you go to the server, and the browser then acts as your user uh, host for the universal client. So we rely on HTML, but that places significant limits on what we can do in the client because of the restrictions on forms, etc. We talked about the other day. We can get other effects such as animation, validation, drag and drop, but to do those we have to combine server client side scripting with CSS and DOM manipulation, which is quite a challenge in some cases. We can also add functionality with client side scripting. But because this is quite a complex uh, set of requirements, usually. There are, have been developed web application frameworks to simplify, or at least to make it uh, less of a challenge to create such applications. And they typically produce both the server side and the client side from the same piece of code, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, crafting those by hand. In terms of the technical considerations, um, because it's the web, because it's HTML, and because it's standards, um, you can write the code once and it will deploy anywhere. You do have the issue of um, uh, browser incompatibilities. Certain browsers maybe don't support certain things, so you have to have uh, fixes for, for those variations. Uh, you can also, of course, if you customize things, you can interfere with what the developer wanted. Uh, a big consequence of this particular issue is because a lot of intranet applications were written in to support uh, Internet Explorer 6. Because of that, that's what's holding back the 
the death of it, it, it affects Laura Six and the, uh, and the move towards better better standards. Um, it's essentially because all the intranets and banks and things have, have gone for that browser, and uh, they can't, ch they don't want to change, or it would be expensive to change. Uh, you could use Flash or Java, but that in introduces other issues. What I want to show you here is a. Uh, I've got to get it all on the page. So let me. Let me just switch out of uh, presentation mode for just a second here. This is the um, three-tier system that we're going to be talking about, just as it's called. We have in the browser what's called a presentation tier. Actually, that's not strictly true. The presentation tier is actually split into two. Uh, the, the browser part, the HTML part, is uh, lives in the browser, along with JavaScript and CSS. That presents the user interface to the user. That's usually separated from the server across an internet or an intranet, and communicates with the server using the Ipertext transfer protocol. So the presentation tier is split into two, which is one issue. So if you're writing applications, if you're not using a framework, then you have to write code for this bit and write separate code for that bit, and the two things are not uh, are completely separate from each other. On top of that, th this usually sits on top of what we call an application tier, or application layer, where you have processes running which are providing you with a service. This is the uh, email system or the uh, blogging system or whatever you might be using. Um, this provides user interface for this. But this lives on a separate you know, machine. It may even be a separate machine from the server that is providing the HTTP contact. And quite often, this these processes talk to relational databases or other kinds of databases or other kinds of services across what we might call an integration tier. Very often, these are relational databases, but they don't need to be. There could be other other services provided by cloud computing system or whatever. But if it is a relational database, then you're typically talking across this integration tier using SQL or SQL, which you'll be familiar with from, uh, from your course on databases. This is a little an animation showing you the, the flow of information across this tier. Um, the web browser make some kind of, or change something on the browser, that sends a request to the server. The server pack, unpacks the request parameters, which will be in the HTTP response request, and passes it down to the process. The process generates an SQL query. The SQL query returns some results, which are converted into HTML and then passed to the server back through the HTTP process, which then sends it back to the browser. I'll just watch that again. So the, uh, the user makes some kind of request, the browser sends an HTTP request, that's sent to the server, which extracts the HTTP parameters from the request and passes them on to the application tier, to a process running there, where it's converted into code or something, possibly creates an SQL query which is sent to the relational database. Results come back, converted into HTML, and then sent back to the browser. All the browser ever sees is HTML. It's important to note that. Okay, so we'll switch back to presentation mode. So the application service provider, what is that? Uh, basically, these are the people who provide you with your web application, your email, or whatever. They're called ASPs. Um, they're different from internet service providers. Internet service providers just provide you with a hosting service, typically, and an IP address. These provide you with other services like mail or whatever. Um, 
this sort of idea has been rebranded and you most often find it these days talked about as cloud computing or software as a service and things like that. So what we need to do to develop web applications is we need to juggle things in those three layers that I showed you just now. Um, requires you to know, probably, probably requires you to know some SQL, requires you to know how to generate HTML, requires you to know how to manipulate CSS and JavaScript. And there's some programming language that sits in the application layer, PHP or some other language there to, uh, to, to, to that handle as well. So you've got, I always say, it's about five languages you need to be able to handle to develop web applications. It can be simplified if you use web application frameworks. Um, for example, there are frameworks which, which are written in Java, so you can program everything in Java, uh, and they generate the code necessary to go to the server. I'll show you some, some examples of that sort of thing. You can, uh, there are others that allow you to develop things in Ruby. Ruby on Rails, for example, is a framework. Um, but even if the framework is doing the generation of JavaScript and HTML for you, you're still having to handle it probably at some point. Um, so they can make things a little easier, but uh, and they can promote good practice. But at the end of the day, you still probably have to wrangle some of the JavaScript yourself. The most common platform for delivery of web applications is what's called the LAMP platform. The name LAMP was originally created by some guy in Germany, I think. There's information about where the acronym comes from in the notes for this presentation. Basically, it stands for, the L stands for Linux, which is the operating system that you saw last term. The, pa the A stands for Apache, which is the web server. M typically stands for MySQL, which is the database management system, open source database management system that is used in a lot of uh, web applications. And the P, well, it depends on your language of choice. It used to stand for Perl, then quite often stands for PHP these days. Uh, sometimes it stands for Python. Um, it doesn't stand for Ruby, but uh, sometimes it's Ruby. Sometimes it's Java. And so the, the P is a bit of a, uh, it probably would better call it a programming language. It stands for programming language. That's, that's a good idea. I've just thought of that. P stands for programming language. It doesn't really matter what it is, actually, because uh, all it does is generate text. But none of these things are actually designed to work together particularly. But uh, Apache was developed on a Unix operating system. And so there's a natural match there between Unix and, the, and Apache, although it will run on Windows. Um, MySQL was also developed as a, as a Unix application, but it also runs on Windows um, and so on. So although these things were never designed to be together, the, the combination of them is sufficiently well established that uh, just about everybody uses this, this set. And it's often bundled together either as a an installable download, which we will be using ourselves later, and uh, and um, in fact, we'll be using this one in the, in, on Monday. You're installing this XAMP for Windows. XAMP is is a bundle created by some guys in Germany called Apache Friends. They have a nice website, and they just monitor and maintain a, 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 a couple of uh, implementations of the LAMP stack for both Windows, Win, for Windows, Macintosh, Solaris and Linux. And they just allow you to, to download that and, and put it on your web server for no cost. And we'll be seeing that on Monday. What I want to do for the remainder of this session is just to show you some example web applications. This is no, not meant to be exhaustive by any, any means. It's just basically a, a snapshot of the sort of things that you might be typically using on this course, in courses like this or within learning. So I'm going to be looking at wikis. 
we're looking at content management systems, we're looking at blogs, we're looking at collaborative software and social software. The sort of rough um, sort of headings for the things that I'm going to show you now. Um, what I'm going to show you first of all is a wiki. This is um, probably the most famous wiki of all. This is Wikipedia, of course. But what is quickly obvious, if you bring up uh, a browser with, say, Firebug on it, Firebug is this tool for the browser that sits within the uh, Firefox browser and allows you to browse the code and see what's going on. You can see this is just a web page. As far as the browser is concerned, it's a web page that happens to be written in HTML1 transitional, but it's just HTML. There's an HTML header there. It's got the usual features. You can browse to a point on there, and it's got divs, classes, and it's got CSS controlling how it looks, and it's got uh, scripts, probably. Show you, show you the script. It's got, it's got DOMs with lots of attributes that have been modified and, and so on. So it's it's just a web application. At the end of the day, it's just a web page as far as the browser is concerned. It has interactive features, so it's got a form there for search, and you can uh, you can edit things. For example, if I go into CP Jobling here, this is my page on Wikipedia. I can go and edit this page. And you can see that, the, like a lot of wikis, it's a sort of text based format. It doesn't use CSS at this level. And it's supposed to be nice and easy to uh, use. So you can say, you can anybody can come along and edit this. So I can put in LO EG259 class of 2011. And I can uh, save that. And it tells me it's changed the page. And I can I can look at the history. I can see who has changed this. You can see the two that you can compare versions. You can see it sees that this was what was originally there, this is what is there now and I added this line and if I don't like that version I can come along and I can revert. How do I revert? I can undo and it goes back to what it was before. Which is what wiki editors will typically do if you go along and vandalize the pages. So it's a it's a very Useful web application is designed for creating large amounts of text with lots of links, and it makes it somewhat simple. I won't say it's simple; um, it's it does is a bit of a challenge to maintain Wikipedia, but it is somewhat simple to uh, to use. This uh, is also a wiki. If I switch back to this view, this is a page that lives on my server. And it, again, it has editing features. It's the same wiki, in fact, you used for your uh, exercise in the lab last term. It's a similar sort of markup, slightly different. But again, you can edit it, you can preview it, you can uh, have version control, and so on. So that's that's a wiki. The important thing about it to note is it's just a very simple web application when you go into edit. It brings up a uh, text area containing the text that you want to play when you when you change it and save it. That text is put into a database with some version information. And when you uh, when it's dis when somebody wants to display it later on, it just reads the text out of the database, converts it into HTML, and puts it onto the page. So it's a web application it's using those three layers. I just mentioned it's actually written in PHP. If you look at the source code for Wikipedia, which you can get at from here, powered by MediaWiki, 
the MediaWiki software is a PHP application. You need a database, Postgres or MySQL, and you can install your own copy of the software that runs Wikipedia for your own purposes. So that's the first web application we're going to look at. The second one is for blogging. Uh, you may recognize this. This is WordPress. This is actually my blog on my site. You go into where the admin page. And there's a dashboard. I can create new posts from here. I can look after my old posts. I can add themes and all this business. We'll be looking at WordPress in a little while. But again, all of this is just pure HTML. In this case, it's HTML5 because it's got a doc type of HTML. You can see the bodies and the divs and, you, and all this business with the uh, CSS to go with the styles and so on. There's a little bit more going on on the admin page. Because there's more interactive features on that page. But uh, it's still nonetheless, for example, that's a form. There, that title there is a form. And uh, you can see it's, uh, it should be a, a text area, but I can't see the text area. Maybe it's designed to, to not to not to appear as one. But nonetheless, it's a web application. Again, written in the LAMP platform, this one uses PHP and MySQL as well. And we'll be installing this one as part of the exercise on Monday, so you'll get a chance to see that. Although Selchuk's course has already installed it for his uh, mouse, micro mouse. The other class of uh, application I mentioned were content management systems. This is the content management system you're using in the GDE. It's Drupal. Again, it's CSS. It's plain old HTML. It's a uh, strict version of HTML, XHTML1, this one. And again, it has stuff which is just normal HTML input types with CSS to make it look nice on the screen. And there's a little bit of JavaScript as well in some of the, some of the features on this page. And of course, with a content management system, you can create content, you can control when that content appears on your website, you can have different types of content, you can install modules to give you extra features, you can change the themes and so on. But at the, at the level of the actual what appears on the screen, it's HTML again. And all of those applications I've shown you so far were written in PHP, which currently is at 3.5, 5.3.5 version. Uh, this is the main PHP page, php.org, I think it is. Um, it's just a programming language, effectively. That's all it is. And this is where you go for the documentation of the language. Uh, most uh, most systems you don't actually have to install anything, but if you were to install this, you'd need an Apache web server or something that could support the PHP code and some code which is, is installed into, into that web server as a module in the case of, the case of Apache. Um, but uh, if you get the lab stack, then it's usually part of it. You don't have to do anything to get it. It's mostly there for you. In fact, on the Macintosh, it's, it's installed as standard. The other component that comes in all these applications I've shown you so far is MySQL. This is a uh, open source database. Um, I believe you're, you're supposed to pay a license if you're using it for Nanga, but uh, I'm not sure any who actually does pay a license. It's actually, it was actually bought by Sun, who made the Java language or made the Java language, and now Sun was bought by Oracle, which is a big database manufacturer, so Oracle now own MySQL. But it is open source, so if Oracle decided to drop it, it could go back into the open source community and continue to be maintained uh, 
there. Um, you will have seen my SQL in your database course because it's the one that most people use for teaching and so on. It just sits on your system, you've got a command line interface to it, or you can have a nice web applications interface to it using PHP My Admin or cPanel, and you can manipulate it from the web as well. So so that's that's what you'll find, that's the M in, in the lamp. That's um, Again, if you get lamp, you don't usually need to install this separately. Some other applications uh, uh, on the collaborative side of things. This is Google Calendar, which I use for maintaining my day book, so I know where I'm meant to be. See all of my courses here. If we look at this, it's hard to tell what this is actually. Um, it is still a web application, as you can see if you look at the uh, code. It is HTML, HTML4 transitional this time, sorry, for strict this time. We can't really tell much about it because most of this functionality is actually created by scripts. All we've got is a few HTML div tags to hand, hang the stuff on. All the, all the actual content that appears on the page has been created by JavaScript adding things to the DOM, script-wise. script, script wise. There is some CSS here as well, obviously, to, uh, because you, you still need to have it make it look nice, so there's still some CSS here, but all the, all the content just about on this page is actually being generated by JavaScript. The same thing is true of uh, Google Docs, which is another application provided by Google as an application service provider. Um, here we have a uh, presentation in Google Docs, so equivalent to PowerPoint. And again, it's just HTML. Um, if you look at it, you won't be able to tell much about it because, again, most of this interface has been generated by JavaScript, adding things to the DOM, um, rather than having HTML tags. So the HTML tags you see on this page have actually been generated by JavaScript. This is the toolkit that is used to create Google, most of Google's uh, applications, called Google Web Toolkit. This is actually a software development kit that, that allows you to program your application in Java, so you write the user interface using the same sort of um, event handling stuff you may have seen from Java when you looked at Java last term, or earlier in the year. The same sort of features, so you have widgets and stuff, and uh, what this does is it compiles that into JavaScript, CSS, and, and HTML. And that's the stuff that's sent to the browser, and it's that stuff population of the, uh, the widgets and so on that uh, is all being done from the server side from a framework which is in Java in this case. There's These development kits, they have their own language, right? This, this one is Java. Oh. You program this in Java. So you have uh, Java classes for the various in, in user interface components. You have event handlers and this kind of thing. And you program it as you would program a Java user interface, effectively. But it generates JavaScript and HTML and so on that you need to send to the browser. There's another um, development kit, Google App Engine, which allows you to create an application, run it on Google's infrastructure. This one is slightly different. This one uses um, um, Python as a standard. Python um, Django framework, but allows you to, to use Google's big databases and so on. So that's another approach. That's a framework again, where you effectively write the code on the server side and it generates the code for the client side. Um, other collaborative tools. This is uh, social bookmarking site Delicious. Um, Bought by Yahoo and wishing and now being sold by Yahoo again, apparently. This is uh, 
again a web application you can look at it it's uh, HTML4 it's built for lots of divs and, and CSS and JavaScript I'm not quite sure what the underlying engine is for this but it's probably it's pro possibly PHP or some other language it's hard to tell Here's another one. This is uh, this is a social coding site. This is GitHub, um, a sort of social network for coders. And you see the sort of social features telling you what people are doing, and you can follow people and follow the various people's code. This application is written in Ruby on Rails. Again, if you look at the code, it's just HTML. XHTML transition 1.0 this time. All the features on this page are just normal HTML tags with some style. But the application itself was written in Ruby on Rails. It's got a database on the back end and it generates code that goes to the front end uh, for you. Here's another one Twitter. Twitter is a social network. It originally was written in JavaScript as well. Sorry, in Ruby on Rails as well. So we can view, we can look at it. We can see that it's just forms, just forms and dot type HTML, so it's HTML5 is <coughs> and divs, and everything on the page is has got its own tag and its own style, and so on. And there are bits and pieces of um, code in the code. So I'm showing Twitter. PG259 web application technology class. application. So these last two, the, the, the GitHub and the Ruby on Rails that I showed you, they're written in this framework. This is Ruby on Rails. We'll be, we'll be introducing to this later in the course. It's one of these frameworks where again you, you, you typically write your code from the back end. You're dealing with uh, a model view controller pattern. You write the handlers for the HTTP requests. You handle, you write the models which are essentially uh, views of the database tables. Uh, you you write the code that goes with the those database tables to make them appear nice on the web web screen. You write a little bit of a CSS, but effectively it's all on the server side, and what's passed to the browser is created by the framework for you on your behalf. But again, sometimes you have to go in there to fix stuff. A couple of others. Last sort of category on the list that we started off with is uh, social media. This is Facebook, which is familiar, I guess, to most of you. Um, again, this is a not no more than a piece of HTML page with styles and JavaScript in it. This time, it's strict XHTML. You notice uh, some input forms in there, have you? Everything's got a style. You can sort of move around and pick things up and find what what things are. Um, standard controls, input ID, class equals input text. All this stuff is being put on there, but it's basically just a uh, ordinary input field with some JavaScript attached so it does things a little bit slicker. This is, uh, I think, a PHP application with a MySQL or database on the back end. Obviously, though, this is a fairly complicated one because this has, has to have uh, hundreds of servers and 
user interfaces distributed across hundreds of networks. I don't know why it's gone like that. Try and bring it back. It's distributed across hundreds of networks. Uh, so you've got a, a whole farm of uh, of servers supporting this with a distributed database and all, all this business. But again, it's just a web application written in HTML. And this is another social network. This is Elg. This is one you can install yourself on your own server. Uh, remember what the password is. So it's a sort of sort of Facebook-like platform for intranets or institutions. You have the same sort of features, posts, and whatever. You can make friends with various people. You can blog. You can share photographs. All this stuff. So it's sort of so it's like a, a Facebook that you install on your own server to create your own social network. And there are other networks like Ning and so on, which you can use uh, if you don't wish to serve your own. So those are the classes of uh, applications. Again, you can look at the source code and you, again you will see that it's just HTML. It's interesting to note from all these applications actually which version of HTML they're all using. It varies quite a bit as you can see. We've had some which were HTML4, and then some which were XHTML transitional, some HTML strict, and I even had a couple of HTML5 sites. So. Uh, but they're all using some flavor of HTML. A lot of them are using these divs with uh, classes that allow you to specify various bits of the pages as being special. And they all have some kind of style which uh, makes them appear nice on the screen. And although I've not been able to show you it very easily, they all actually also have some JavaScript as well. So that's uh, that's the um, sort of web applications framework. It's useful, I think, because we've been able to see quite a few of them. What I want you to take away from this lecture is that uh, no matter what the web application actually is, when it comes to the browser, it's just HTML as far as the browser is concerned. There's nothing special about any of these systems. They're all just HTML, but more or less uh, manipulated by the JavaScript. Sometimes the JavaScript creates most of the user interface, as in the case of the Google applications. All the, all the sort of elements you would have seen on the screen there were not actually viewable because they didn't exist really, except in the DOM, the document object model, which is a representation of what's on the screen in the browser itself. Some web application more traditional in that there's a lot of HTML with lots of divs that mark out various parts of the page and there are styles attached to them and, and JavaScript associated with them. There are more traditional types. But at the end of the day, it's, it's only HTML, JavaScript and CSS. That's all these web applications are. Um, we've looked at uh, various bits of collaborative software and blogging and wikis. Um, collaborative software, the idea basically is to allow people to work together in various ways, for example, remotely together in the same room, face to face and so on. And uh, those are the examples I showed you were effectively various examples of that. The social software, of course, is very popular these days with social networks like Facebook, Twitter, and so on. So, in, a sum in summary, what I've covered in this session are web applications in general. I've told you what they are, or how I define them. I've told you about the LAMP platform, and I've mentioned XAMP, which we'll be using next week. And I've told you of some example web applications. Of course, you could tell me of lots of others. Um, but uh, 
what I what I think is important from my definition, what I'm talking about when I mention a web application, I'm not talking about anything that involves Flash or Silverlight. It's pure HTML, pure JavaScript, pure CSS. Um, and something on the back end that's providing with the software as a service or cloud computing or whatever you want to call it, that is actually the, the sort of intelligence in their application itself. So, um, hopefully you'll be able to answer these questions now. Um, we won't get you to do it because I don't want you to be embarrassed by going on the, on the, on the, on the video. Um, but uh, could you perhaps give me a couple of advantages of each of these, maybe? A wiki? We've seen a couple of advantages. A couple of uh, examples um, of wikis. What do you mean by example? Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. There's also your wiki, Doku wiki. Doku wiki, yeah. WikiLeaks. <laughs> Wikimedia. Uh, WikiLeaks, I don't think, is a wiki, is it? Is it a wiki? Is it a wiki? Yeah. I've never been to WikiLeaks. <laughs> I thought it wasn't a wiki. I think. I think uh, oh, it's a regular website. What's his name? Um, who, who's got, who invented uh, Wikipedia? James Whale, is it? Yeah. Not James Whale. Is it James Whale? He doesn't like it being called Wiki WikiLeaks because it's not a wiki. Jimmy Wales. Jimmy Wales. That's right. What about blogs? Two example web applications for blogs. WordPress. WordPress. Yeah. Tumblr. Blogger. Blogger, yeah. Tumble. Tumblr, yeah. Content management systems. Drupal. Drupal, yeah. Joomla. Joomla, yeah. That's it. That's it. We use one at the university called uh, Terminal 4. All the university's website is, a, is, is built with a content management system called Terminal 4. It's not very good, actually. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a commercial CMS. Collaborative software systems. Yeah. Of collaborative in, sense, in a sense. I mentioned in this particular lecture, I mentioned Google Docs. Yeah, Google Docs, yeah. There are lots of thousands of web applications going on in the collaborative software system. There's the Zoho Docs. Email and applications like uh, together with the Yeah, Gmail is also a collaborative software system, right? Can be. It's using Java. Java. Yeah, Java. Java. Gmail. Gmail, yeah. Well, it's personal productivity tool, perhaps. Uh, Blackboard. Well, yeah, Blackboard itself is a, is a... I wanted to show you that. Blackboard itself is a web application. It's transitional. Frame set. Terrible. <laughs> Blackboard uses a frame, which, of course, are... I told you are the worst thing ever invented. But this thing here, one frame. frame. And this is another frame. And that side is also frame, right? The side one. Uh, not in the new version, I don't think. I think in the new version, they've made this part of the normal content. But this bit is a frame. I think the top. But again, it's just HTML. JavaScript and occasionally some bits of Java, Java, Java apps and various bits of it as well on the, on the screen. So, yes, there are various uh, collaborative systems. Um, social networks, Facebook, Twitter, there's loads. <laughs> there's loads of them. Um, but they're all web apps. What, what's interesting, just to conclude here, is, is the difference between a web app and an app, as a phone app. Um, there's, a, there's an interesting, uh, well, there's a very popular marketplace for apps, for iPad, iPhone, 
Android and so on, but they're somewhat uh, they're somewhat problematic in my view because they are not web applications. They're all separate little applications, and I fear that they because they become very popular that we might see a movement away from web apps towards little apps, which will be much in the long run harder to develop and, and will not support as well collaborative work between between systems. But uh, there's an interesting uh, debate to be had there. Uh, I think you will be looking at apps in the, in the course next year when you look at uh, future interaction technologies. But there's a, there's some interesting developments happening in the in the internet because of the popularity of small portable devices and the change in the, the landscape a little bit. So web app, it's not always a web app. Sometimes it's an application that is built more like a traditional application that you download and install. Still, probably talks the same kind of services at the back end, but the front end is different. It's not going to be a even we are using an application which is using a web, it uses the web application. The mm -hmm. apps on the iPhone, some of them are using the web applications to make good stuff. Yeah, yeah. But some of them have a completely different user interface. Okay, well, does anybody have any questions? I'm going to shut down the recorder so you can.